is one name I love to call The name of Jesus Demons can't withstand No other name I know can deliver At the mention of the name Every knee must bow There is one name I love to call The name of Jesus Demons can't withstand No other name I know can deliver A mention of the name Every knee must bow the atmosphere has changed now. Miracles are happening. Tonight, I am actually humbled to have this awesome man of God with, uh, with us, Apostle Martin L. Griffin, Sr. I met, I think I first met Apostle more than 10 or 12 years ago, and he was here on Facebook. You know, Apostle does uh, this round table um teachings that each time you know when he's on i just feel drawn to this man of god i just feel drawn you know it's like a bee that is drawn to the flower why because of it's a deep collect unto deep so when he's teaching i like to sit down and write because i know that he is a man of god that is full of wisdom he's a father to many pictures and um, tonight, I'm just humbled that I've had um, Dr. Martins. You know, you you accepted my little my invitation. You know, I'm so humbled. So I'm just going to give us a brief um, bio of uh, Apostle Martin um, because so many of us don't know him, or maybe few people know him on Facebook. But what a privilege tonight! Apostle Martin L. Griffin Sr. is a founder and a visionary of Equipping Ministries Fellowship International, located in Cleveland, in a global five-fold apostle. EMFI is about empowering people and ministries for their kingdom function and call. He has been called to the nations to build and to disciple the nations into their destiny and purpose. One of the main areas targeted in this endeavor is the shifting the church from a pastoral model to an apostolic model. EMFI is an international family of fivefold apostolic people and leaders who have come under apostolic order with a passion to see God's rule and influence affect the nations. He is a spiritual covering to, men, to ministries globally that are aligned to him as a spiritual father. The overall goal of EMF, EMFI is to identify, train, equip, and activate, release fivefold ministry gifts, and to raise up mature sons in the kingdom of God, gifted with a strong apostolic, prophetic healing, deliverance, and teaching anointing. Apostle Griffin travels the globe training and equipping churches and individuals to functions in the fullness of their power of the Holy Spirit. He is progressively taking the gospel of the kingdom of God to the nations with signs following. He has been called into a ministry of reconciliation as he, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, have been instructed as in Nehemiah to raise up and build spiritual buildings not just bricks and mortar ones. Apostle Griffin is called to impact the anointing, activate and unleash the gifts of the Holy Spirit in the lives of the remnants. Apostle Griffin is a restorer of the sanctuary and a repairer of the bridge, bridging the gap between the falsehood of religion and the glory kingdom living. He is an end-time apostle with vision demonstrating leadership and leading with compassion. As an apostle, his commitment to building the kingdom of God is quite evident. Over 42 years in ministry and 35 years of pastoral leadership, married for 34, 42 years 
He and his wife, Brenda Griffin, are the father of five godly children. He holds a doctorate of theology and is a spiritual father to many. <laughs> just reading the resume, just uh, <laughs> 42 years in ministry. And out of these 42 years, he has been a, a, a 35 years of pastoral leadership. So tonight, I'm just blessed to have you, sir. He's my mentor because when the Lord, you know, I watched him for many, many years and um, I just felt my spirit is connected to him. If I did not have a spiritual father, he would be a father to me. He is still a father, but he is my mentor because I'm gleaning, I'm learning from him. And by the grace of God, Apostle, you're still going to come to Nigeria <laughs> by, the, by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, we believe, I, I believe personally that as you have said in your, you know, you, you are equipping the body of Christ with all these years of experience in the work of God. This is a season I believe God just wants to release you to nations to equip to bring things to order that have gone out of order. So tonight, please, let's just join our hands as we welcome Apostle Dr. Griffin to tonight's um, International Pastors and Ministers Conference. You're welcome, sir. I oh deliberately, God. sorry, left you for the last <laughs> segment of the conference. <laughs> Thank you for waiting. God bless you, sir. Amen. We praise God. We thank the Lord for uh, this opportunity. Thank you, uh, Dr. Margaret, for um, um, hearing the Holy Spirit and uh, thank you. bringing everybody uh, together here. Um, we thank the Lord for uh, the previous speakers, uh, everyone, every presenter, and uh, what they have shared uh, here. Um, here on this uh, live. Allow me just to share share a few things. Uh, we've been on in a, a little while. I'm not complaining, but um, um, let me just kind of share and uh, finish up. I used to run, um, in my younger days, I used to run track. I ran track, I ran cross country, whatever. I uh, ran the relays. And uh, I guess this is the uh, final, this is the final lap. Um, but I want to share uh, with you what the Lord uh, has been speaking to me about. Uh, and we've been hearing about blowing the trumpet, sounding the alarm. You know, Jesus, when G and, and the, everybody here is a leader. I, I, was, I was listening to um, uh, Prophet Moses. Uh, he was speaking about, you know, not holding people. They should be released. You know, when God says to release them and how this son, mm -hmm. how his spiritual son now is, you know, doing ministry. And, you know, when she read that uh, bio, uh, talked about transitioning people out of the pastoral model into the apostolic model. Apostolic model uh, trains, equips, releases, sends them out. Pastoral model, and then uh, wants everybody just to come and take care of me, the leader, in all of your life, just coming to the house and take care. And there are people in the uh, uh, houses of worship that have their own callings, their own assignments. God wants to send them out. So there's a difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. There is none like you. We worship you, all oh, friends of peace. That is what we long to do. We give you praise. For you are our righteousness, we worship you, 
Almighty God, there is none like you. Jesus, 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 thank you, the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah, thank you for the reconnect. Hallelujah, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of the called out one that had Messiah. We are the called out ones. We've been blood bought. Lord. We bless your name forever. Bless your name, Lord. Bless your name. Bless your name. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we bless you. Lord, we bless you. Lord, 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 in the name of Jesus. Lord, bless you. 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 Lord, so God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, the Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Sound the trumpet. The word is really talking to every one of us. We, when we leave here tonight, I believe with all my heart. Oh, I think I'm seeing him coming back now. Praise God. Hallelujah. The devil has failed. Hopefully. <laughs> here he is. Uh, should I should I go forth? Well, Praise Lord, everybody. <laughs> yes, can you everybody yes, see sir. me? Yes, sir. Your plan is there. Welcome. Yeah. Amen. Can everybody see me? Yes, yes sir. sir. Amen. L listen, listen, saints of God. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen. I, you, you, every, everybody sees my light on? Yeah. Every every place in my house, electricity went off except for this light, including wow. my internet, including my including my computer. Wow! Everything Praise went out. God. You know, look, look here. The enemy, the enemy, Abed is defeated. Glory That's to God. Right. Right. Man, listen, I'm 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 trying to um, I'm trying to see you all, but that that's all right. Um, allow me to uh. There, there you go. L l listen, saints, this is what I want to say, amen. This is what the Lord had given to me. At the beginning of Jesus, at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, he went into the temple and he overturned the money changers. Okay? They were trafficking. Listen, saints, they were trafficking. They were they were doing, they were having what's called unrighteous trading. Yep. This is what I'm going to talk about for a few minutes. Righteous and unrighteous trading. Satan was a trafficker. Did you hear me, people of God? Satan was a trafficker. And I think that's in, the, I think that's in Ezekiel chapter 28. It said, uh, I, I don't have any light, so I can't read the words. So I'm just going to have to go. Amen. From uh, memory or, or paraphrase here. The enemy was a trafficker. 
and he he gained so much and he was lifted up in pride and wanted to be like the most high god the bible says in ezekiel mm -hmm. chapter 28 in the king james version it says he he trafficked which means he traded when mm -hmm. jesus began his ministry he went into the temple and uh the watchman i heard dr smith i heard apostle smith talking about where are the watchmen the watchmen that were supposed to be watching over the temple watching over where the presence the power the people of god were they had allowed people to come in and traffic mm -hmm. they had allowed unrighteous trading to come in jesus came in in the beginning of the ministry he overturned the money changers he says you've made this place a den of thieves it's supposed to be a house of prayer amen one of the things about jesus amen in the beginning of his ministry he goes into the temple overturns the money changers and before he goes to the cross before he's crucified he goes back in the temple and he does the same thing they they were still doing the same thing god is overturning the tables Amen. He's overturning unrighteous tables. Come on, come on. He's overturning, amen, unrighteous trading, unrighteous mm -hmm. trafficking. Mm -hmm. We are familiar, we are familiar with terminology as drug trafficking, sex trafficking. We here in America, uh, earlier this week, they found, you know, that people have been uh, people been coming from Mexico across the border and they found about 50 people in a truck that had died that they yeah. were trafficking from Mexico into uh, uh, America uh, they had suffocated uh, they had starved uh, there's something called sla slave trafficking uh, I was talking about this earlier today uh, there was somebody that lives in uh, uh, on our 10 o'clock session. There's somebody that lives in New York City. And I said, we have to understand what trading is. We have to understand what trafficking is in the spiritual realm. Because in New York, in London, you have a London stock exchange. Another word is a London place of trafficking. A London place That's of right. trading. The Wall Street, New York That's stock right. exchange trading. In the spiritual realm, there's something called trading, trafficking. And there's supposed to be what? Um, um, uh, there is unrighteous and righteous uh, uh, trafficking. The Lord is not pleased with the watchman allowing everything to come into the houses of worship. He is overturning Jesus. the tables. And I want to I read this. Yes. I want to read this. Uh, in, in in Revelations uh, chapter uh, chapter um, uh, um, chapter three concerning the church of Laodicea, there's a there's a spiritual status of many who are in Laodicea, and they need to get a passport so they can get out a spiritual My passport God. to get out of La Laodicea. My God. They're lukewarm. They're neither hot nor cold. Uh, leadership, people in stuck in Laodicea. And there is a godly prescription in uh, Revelations chapter uh, uh, 3 that God, that the Lord Jesus gives to the leader, to the angel of the church. And he tells him, uh, he tells him, uh, what's happening in his church that he oversees in Laodicea. A godly prescription. Primarily, it is repentance. But Jesus in, uh, 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 in this uh, uh, church of Laodicea, he gives more than repentance. He talks, Jesus talks about trading. He talks about righteous trading. Righteous trafficking. There's so much unrighteous trading, unrighteous trafficking in the houses of worship, in the hearts of the people. So that so much that many know more about the ways of the world than the ways of God. They don't know the ways of God. Jesus. 
People don't know the ways of God. And the leaders are not teaching them the ways of God. This is why the deception is coming upon the people. This is why people are departing from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Amen. Let me talk to you about righteous trading here for a moment. Isn't this, let me just say, isn't this amazing? As soon as we begin to speak, Bam, the internet goes off. The electricity goes off. But the light stays on. Hallelujah. I stepped, I stepped out of the room. My son just came from uh, Virginia. Amen. I went through the house. They said, everything's off. Everything's off except for this light. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> uh, and I'm waiting for any moment for everything to pop back on. Righteous trading. God is overturning unrighteous Tables. Amen. Amen. He's overturning people that are uh, trafficking like Lucifer, like Lucifer did. Jesus. 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 And he put him out. He put Lucifer out. People have been entrapped. They've been entrapped in unrighteous trading. Thinking that they can do anything and allow... And the watchmen are allowing anything to come into the house of God, not showing them the ways of God. Because in many cases, they don't know the ways of God. And this is what Dr. S this is, it, it, it's, ama it's amazing, Dr. Smith. It's amazing, Apostle Smith, if she's still on here, because I can't see everybody. How God could tell her that here is a man of God, a, 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 a leader, a shepherd over people. And his books and his writings has affected people all over the world. And he doesn't know God. Jesus. Jesus says in Matthew, Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7, I think verse 20 and 21, In that day many will say unto me, Lord, Lord. And I'll say, I never knew you. Yeah, but didn't we prophesy? Didn't we do many wonderful works? Didn't we heal the sick? I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Yes, sir. Here you are doing here you are doing ministry and you don't even know God. There you go. You've been amen secretly, privately, but aware God is aware. Operating in unrighteous trading. So so here, uh uh, uh um, um <laughs> Revelation chapter uh uh three verse fourteen. Let me read this. Uh and and, and thank you all, thank you, Dr. Uh, Margaret, for waiting. <laughs> Thank you for waiting no. on me. Glory to God. Yes. And unto the angel of the church of Laodicea, these things uh, saith the amen, the faithful and uh, the beginning of the creation of God. Well, I can't see in this light, this, this dim light. I know your works, that you are neither hot nor cold. I would that you were hot or cold. But because you are lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Yeah. And then he said, then he says this, because you say, because this is your testimony, because this is your confession, because this is your lifestyle. I'm rich and uh, increased with goods and have need of nothing. In other words, they need to be dependent upon God. They need to be, be dependent upon Jesus. And so uh, the church, some in the church are not dependent upon him. It was like some of the other speakers were saying, you know, when you go to conferences, you need to be led by the spirit of God. Somebody was saying in the beginning, thinking maybe it was Dr. Arusa, Dr. Abigail, you know, or someone that when you invite a speaker, you should be inquiring of God. You should be asking the Holy Spirit who to choose like you did, Dr. Margaret, who to, who is it to choose? And I think it was a prophet that says, you know, that uh, uh, people bring people that bring a crowd, that bring a big offering. Mm -hmm. They don't inquire. They don't inquire of God. <laughs> unrighteous. That's unrighteous trading. That's unrighteous trafficking. It's a work of the flesh. It's a. It's the wisdom of man. And uh, uh, Jesus says this: You have needed nothing, but you are poor, wretched. A miserable, blind, and naked. And here it goes in verse 18. This is where Jesus speaks to us 
about righteous trading, righteous trafficking. I didn't read Ezekiel chapter uh, 28. I think it's uh, Ezekiel 28 and 5. 28 and 5, you see the word traffic. He, 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 was, he traded, he traded. This is one of the ways, I won't go into it, this is one of the ways that he manipulated and, op and function uh, to be able um, um, to get, oh, the devil don't like this, people trying to call me, this, this is even a spam, this is even a spam call. Hallelujah, glory to God. He even was able to influence a third of the angelic host. Amazing. Through his trafficking. Influencing the angelic realm that was created to worship and glorify God. Servants of the Most High God. He influenced through his trafficking. Verse 18 says, now he, Jesus says this, I counsel, I counsel the people of God in this end time. I counsel you to buy of me, to trade. Trading means, trafficking means exchange. It means to exchange. The angelic host, the third angelic host, they exchanged uh, living for, worshiping, serving, ministering unto the most high God from this uh, 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 angel who had been caught up in pride. They exchanged that. They exchange the glory of God for pride. He says, I counsel you to buy of me gold tried in the fire, gold that has been refined. So God is saying amen for a, pre a prescription for, for spiritual health, uh, uh, to go along with our repentance, to be refined. He's, he's calling us, amen, to come into a righteous trading with him, a divine exchange. He says uh, that, you may, that you may be rich. Look at that. Look at this. He, sa he says in verse 17, you are poor. But if you traffic with me, if you trade with me, and you, uh, uh, if you trade with me, you'll become rich. Exchange. White raiment, that the white raiment, they were uncovered. Purity. Uh, let me let me finish this. Uh, 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 that you may not, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that you may be able to see. They were blind, poor, and naked. But if they exchange, if they come to Jesus, if they if they repent and come to Jesus and have righteous trading, that amen, God would bring them and restore them. The unrighteous trading that's going on uh, throughout the world, and I'm talking about the church. I'm not talking about people outside the commonwealth of Israel, outside the commonwealth of the church. The unrighteous trading, they have exchanged a worldly systems, worldly mindsets, uh, business examples, business examples, business models, worldly models to try to move the glory of God. They were trying, the, the, un, the unrighteous trading is like David who, um, who had the right motive, had the right mindset. Let's bring the glory, let's bring the ark back into its rightful place. Let's bring it back to the rightful place. But he used he used a he used an earthly, fleshly, earthly wisdom model. Let's put it on an ox cart. And it went so far and it brought forth death. It stumbled. They couldn't proceed. And God said, Amen. When he consulted God, when he had repented and cried out and and, and traded with God, he, he said, uh, you, you you, you didn't go back to the word. The word says, the, the, I, I told Moses that the only way that the ark can be moved 
was on the shoulders of the priest. You got to get under. You got to get under. You got to humble yourself under the hand of God to, so the glory can move. Hello, somebody. Amen. And, and so uh, I wanted to share with you uh, this about uh, 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 trading, righteous and unrighteous trading. And so Jesus, amen, says uh, to them, light still not on. He continues to say to them, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Uh, 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 be zealous, therefore, and repent. The message of the kingdom is repentance. John the Baptist, the forerunner, came. And he preached what? Repentance. Jesus came. The first message, amen, that he preached is repentance. We preach more about prosperity. We preach more about uh, uh, um, different streams of income, you know, um, um, and etc. But we don't preach about what? Repentance. We don't preach about this. You've already said. We don't preach about sin. We don't point things out. And in some cases, we are afraid. I heard somebody say, I, I thought it was Dr. Smith said something about the Facebook prison. Awesome. <laughs> Facebook prison. Preach righteousness. Say what God gives you to say. God will take care of you. God will protect you. Mm -hmm. And now the, um, now the stuff is starting to come back on. He continues to say, behold, I stand at the door. It's an amazing statement that Jesus says to the Laodicean spirit that's in the earth. Those that have been infected. You know, people. we talked about people being infected with COVID. People are infected with what? Laodicea. Yes. Mm. Wow. My goodness. Y'all hear what I'm saying, people of God? And Dr. Fauci over here in America and the medical field got no remedy for Laodicea spirit. No no remedy for the lukewarm spirit. Mm. My Jesus God. Jesus prescribes what you got to do. He says, you got to come to me and trade with me. Come before Jesus. my presence and, and repent. Come before Jesus. me and I'll tell you what to do. Jesus. Listen, say to God, the, uh, you, you know, you, you see in the book of Revelations uh, at the end of these uh uh, chapters he that hath an ear to hear let him you know he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit says to the church the Hebrew in the Hebrew understanding the Hebrew understanding when a person heard uh, mm -hmm. obedience was also applied you didn't hear unless you were obedient to what you heard if you're not obedient to it you're not hearing and uh, so uh, he says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Jesus is on the outside. Jesus is on the outside of the church. No wonder this, no wonder this stuff is going on in the houses of worship. No wonder, amen, Jesus had to go into the temple at the beginning of his ministry and in his ministry because, amen, they, had not, they didn't have the presence of God in there. And there was a void. There was a void. There was a spiritual void. For any for the devil to do anything to bring anything in that in the place, and Jesus came in and he overturned it. He that overcometh will I grant. Uh, um, uh, I stand do not. If any man hear my if any man hear my voice, walk in obedience. I'll open what the door and come into him, and I will sup with him, and he with me. A divine exchange, a righteous trading. You hear me saying, people of God. Amen. I, I, I won't go into this long as we've been on long. One of the first times, the first time in the earth that you see unrighteous trading, the first time you see unrighteous trading was in the Garden of Eden. When that serpent, when the enemy uh, came into that serpent and was saying stuff to Adam and Eve, and there was an exchange. And Adam and Eve gave up their dominion. They gave up their spiritual status. Glory to God, my God. 
they gave up their little lord, their little lordship in the earth, so they could so they could get some knowledge. And there was an exchange, unrighteous trading, and they were put out. Unrighteous trafficking, unrighteous trading. God does not tolerate this. God will not tolerate this. The Lord is calling us back to. He's calling us back to himself. And he says to the church, repent. And trade with me. Trade with the kingdom of God. You see what I'm saying, people, God? And so as, as, I, as I close, as I close... Um, um, Apostle Stan, when you go to the when you go to the uh, uh, gas station, the service station to get gas, you're trading. You're giving what? You're giving something to receive something. Yes. You go to the store. You're trading. You give yes. something to receive something. And God is saying, "Amen." Uh, uh, cast all of our care upon Him. Trade with me. I am the source of life. I am life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. As the bride of Christ, we are in the world and not of the world. We're not supposed to trade in the world system, in this Babylonian system. Yes, sir. It has contaminated, and as the woman that God said earlier, it has polluted people and polluted amen the altar because of unrighteous trading glory to god uh, um going to share that amen glory to god yes, sir. Uh, I, I i give you no apology amen uh for what happened we know where that source came from but, uh, glory to god and yet we are more than conquerors through Christ, <laughs> in the name of Jesus, and yeah. it just teaches us not to give up, not yes. to quit. That's right. It teaches us as we advance, as God advances us, as He progresses us in the kingdom, that there's going to be persecution, there's going to be pushback. We go forth. Amen. Hello, somebody. I think uh, Paul says. Paul says uh, that a, a effectual door had been opened unto me. And but I perceive, I realize, amen, <laughs> that there's, uh, what do you say, there's, there's persecution or opposition, but it didn't stop him from preaching the gospel. Mm -hmm. So people got, I just want to say this, examine ourselves, me too, examine ourselves to make sure that we are trading righteously. Yes. That we are not contaminated, that we're not polluted, that we're not uh, pulling from sources that are not from God because God is calling us to purity. God bless you, uh, Dr. Margaret. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Amen. Uh, Apostle, for the word. You know, there are so many um, ungodly training going on in the body of Christ. And uh, a few months ago, somebody was asking me, Prophetess, why do you think we don't have power? Or it seems that there's less power for Christians in Nigeria to pray and uh, the hand of Boko Haram will be broken. I said, the Lord said to me, we are calling him with our lips, not our heart. So until we start to commune with God, with our heart, then we will see, we know there will be response to what we are asking God for. But as now, it's like we are paying the, the lip service. So nothing will happen. That has, um, I, for me personally, I'm going back on my knee after this. Just look at the areas, various areas the speakers have spoken. And the one that applies to me. I'm, you know, going back to God to repent. Lord, forgive me in that area. You know, and every one of us, nobody is saying, if any man says they have no sin, the truth is not in them. They are liars. We've all seen and come short of the glory of God. So what God is calling us in this in this season and telling calling us to, you know, blow sound the trumpet, blow the trumpet, the trumpet, 
blow the trumpet. Because when God gives us a word in the secret, he expects us as prophets or if an apostle or whichever area the God has come, he expects us to blow it out, to come out with our own trumpet and say, God says the Lord. This is what he's expecting us to do. And I just want to thank every one of you tonight. You have taken your time, your precious time. I appreciate each and every one of you. Um, Dr. Victoria, I don't know if you're still, I, I think you're still around. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay. I know, thank you so much for your time tonight. Don't go because you're going to uh, help us to pray as we, you know, we close tonight. And um, I'm going to make sure that every one of us gets a copy of this, uh, of this uh, teaching or this ministration tonight. Because I wasn't sure how to uh, connect it to Facebook so that people can then join in. But it will be packaged and then I will now bring it on Facebook. I thank you very much. Um, Apostle Alabi, thank you so much. I mean, Nigeria by now you should be sleeping. What you kept awake, Doctor Vivian. Thank you so much, um, Sister Veron. We don't know, but we will know. <laughs> you know, Apostle Standard. God bless you. Ever go yes. for Christ, Moses. God bless you. God bless you, God bless you man of God. We are here. Okay, <laughs> is your wife? We are using one. Yes, the devil has lost the plot. He didn't want the apostle to speak. But he, I didn't, know. he didn't want us to hear that word. That key word tonight is what? Yes. On hell trading. Oh, yes. Praise God. Sister Leticia, God bless you. Sister Shikana, please burden or Springfield, burden my um, pronunciation. And then Sister Angelica, thank you. Bless you, ma'am. And um, I believe some other people are online. Um, uh, Matthew, Matthew Rell Williams. Sorry, I'm very sorry for pronouncing your name the way I did. Forgive me. I thank God for everyone tonight. We have been fed the word. And the whole essence of this conference is for us to have a reflection. None of us is perfect. We might be there, you know, you know functioning in a particular way in our ministry. I mean, from um, Prophet Moses, releasing people that you are not meant to be with us anymore. You know, when, as a, when you have a nest and the mother hen is there, when the children have uh, grown or the chicks have uh, grown the nest, what does he do? He will scatter the, the nest so they can be free. You don't need to hold anyone. Our own is to teach, equip them, and then what? Release. That's the model of Christ, the 12 uh, apostles. So if we, if every one of us, take whatever we are taking tonight from this conference, let's go with the vision God has set before us. Let's not be weary in what God has called us. Look, I've seen something that maybe I need to be corrected. I notice that those that God truly have anointed with <laughs> heavy anointing, right? If you go to their church, you'll be surprised if, if you are able to find 200 people in that church. It doesn't mean that the other ones that have uh, millions in their churches, they're not anointed. I'm only saying that if you carry the presence of the Lord, if you carry the glory of God, if you carry his kabod, if you carry the presence of God, Satan will be fighting like headless chicken. Like he tried to do tonight. He knew that the word coming from apostle, he took the light. But God said, no, you're not going to have the last to say here. And that was why the light in your, where you are, remain. That's God for you. If nothing <laughs> tonight, we cannot do something like this and Satan does not appear. Wherever the children of God is, Satan is there. But tonight, we I just bless the name of the Lord for what he's doing. Um, I mean, I was doing having this uh, pastor's conference, and then I moved to Nigeria. I, I did, uh, you know, <laughs> for some reason, I did not continue. But Lord, this is going to be, uh, like, by the grace of God, it's going to be like, if not six months, it'll be a yearly um, 
pastors' conference that we're going to be holding from different nations. And I'm hoping by then I will have perfected the act of putting it, streaming it straight to Facebook <laughs> where other people can join in. But we thank God for every one of you. Dr. Carol is, uh, has left. I just thank God for her life. Um, Prophet Moses and your beautiful wife, thank you for your time tonight. Yeah, I welcome, um, well right. God. Thank you so much. So, and um, I don't know, do we have any questions we want to ask any minister before Dr. Victoria will pray for us? Maybe uh, while we're hearing from what we have learned tonight, is there anything that is coming to our heart that we want to maybe seek clarification or whatever? Or does anyone want to add chip in to whatever we've said? You know, the floor is open. I know the time is perfect, but at least five minutes will not, will not take us away from all day. Um, so I, am I assuming that we are all fed and uh, we're ready to go? There was a great conference. Oh, thank you. This is a great conference. Sister Leticia, God bless you. Yes. I always say that in a gathering where God, the move of God is going to be powerful, we only have few people that can take it. It's not meant for the whole crowd. So the all of us that God has brought here tonight is because we have the capacity. God has seen our hearts. And that's why we are here tonight to partake of this. And I just bless the name of the Lord. And I believe that we are going back uh, rejoicing of the world and where we need as myself where I need to go but as I said I will go on my knee tonight you know <laughs> to repent and God help us in Jesus name Amen okay so up to Dr. Carol you have a message you wanted um, to ask I, yes um, I had been getting um, good evening everyone good um, evening uh, um, I want to thank you for having a conference. Uh, Apostle Griffin is, a, is our spiritual father. Yes. It has been quite a blessing um, to be under the teaching. And those that are all connected in the body of Christ, yes. uh, I have learned so much in the last three years, and I'm glad God did what he did to show, yes. show, show us who our covenant family. Um, I kept hearing for the last three years, um, uh, the, uh, the Church of Ephesus, calling the church back to the first love. And um, so I, I pretty much gleaned everything from everybody. It's all about Christ. It's all about his glory. Return to the Father. Love on the Father. Repent, repent. This is the time to turn away. And we can never say, oh, that we have arrived. So I just thank God because it's calling for a self-examination. If we really love God, then we will... Uh, uh, as as we going out, we will first make sure that we have returned our first love. And I want to thank um, the way our, our our spiritual father put it about the righteous tra uh, trading. And I can see why the enemy was, uh, you know, trying to distract that because it makes you really think. Make sure that you, you know my own self. Am I doing the right trading? So I just want to thank everybody because I took my notes and I gleaned from everybody's teaching. I've gotten some nuggets and I too will be going back because, you know, I want to minister effectively for God and with my whole heart. Okay. So, um, thank you for having it. And it was worth that for, for, oh, for four hours. It was worth spending time and tithing our time you. with God. It was really thank worth it. Thank, thank you. God bless you all. I love you all. Thank you. God bless you, ma'am. Okay. We have any other person before Dr. Victoria will pray? In prayer. Okay. Thank you so much. Dr. Victoria? Yes, thank you for your participation. Thank you for your precious time. May the Lord replenish you. May the Lord refill each and every one of us. May our ministry. Blossom in the name of Jesus. 
you know, God taught me something that is the one that gives us the platform, not man. So when God gives us the platform, he will give us a voice to the nation. He will connect us to the right people. Tonight we have become connected spiritually. Those that don't know, uh, Apostle have known it, you know, Dr. Martin. Those that doesn't know Apostle Olu Alabi, you know, tonight we are connected. And I just want to give God all the glory. Dr. Victoria. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you, Prophetess Margaret. Thank you so much for uh, hearing the Lord and yielding to the Holy Spirit to put this conference together. And I just want to say God bless all the speakers. My goodness, this the word was so timely. I believe that this was the now word, especially for we that are in leadership, to go back in total repentance. Every one of us have something to go back on the altar and say, Lord, we are sorry. Um, I, I couldn't do anything. I, I glued you to the teachings tonight and um, my heart was bleeding at a point because it starts from the head. It starts from the leadership. If the leadership can get it right, then the body will get it right. So thank you all so much for this now word. My prayer is that whew, the Holy Spirit will help us all to get it right, to get back on the altar, to repair our altar of prayer and leave our flesh there and get back on track. So please let us pray. Eternal Rock of Ages, the King of all kings and the Lord of lords, we come to say thank you. Thank you for the Father that you are, for not giving up on us. Thank yes, you Lord. for calling us together for such a time as this. Thank you, and I want to thank you for your daughter, uh, Prophetess you. Margaret. I thank you, Lord, for all the speakers today. Indeed, precious Holy Spirit, you spoke through them. Yes. And we have heard. I pray that this word will go forth and begin to change us Amen. internally in the mighty name Amen. of Jesus. I pray that Amen. the spirit of boldness will breath Amen. out of this conference. That Lord, Amen. when we stand before your people, Lord, in a different space of influence, will not be afraid to speak the truth and the truth Amen. only in the mighty name of Jesus. And may we come become Amen. the lifestyle of the truth that we are preaching in the mighty Amen. name of Jesus. Father, thank you. Amen. We give a praise, thank we give you the worship, we give you the glory. We are open to you, precious Holy Spirit. Minister to us more. Speak to Amen. us more. Tear down Amen. the walls that we have built within ourselves in the mighty Amen. name of Jesus. Where Amen. we have missed it by your mercy, bring us back on track, oh God, in the name Amen. of Jesus. Ignite your love in our hearts again. Yes. Ignite, oh Amen. God, your passion, the passion Amen. for lost souls, the passion, Amen. oh God, for the things Amen. of the kingdom. Ignite yes. it again in our hearts in the mighty Amen. name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Father, we just want to say thank you. We receive the word from all the speakers tonight and we run with it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We bless you for the fruit that shall come out of this conference. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you so much, Dr. Victor, for the prayer. And thank you, everyone, for your time. Um, I'll be getting to you individually. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. I really honor you. I honor the oil, the choir. And uh, I'm just humbled that, you know, when I, a little girl like me approach <laughs> mighty men and women of God, they dance at her. I just give God glory. Thank you so much and good night. God bless you. Shalom, God bless you. Thank you. God bless you, sir. I appreciate it. God bless everyone. God bless the night. Awesome. God bless you. Love you. Love you all. Good night. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. I know I can't believe at the mention of the name. But you and I, every knee must bow.